Hey kids, today we're going to talk about some exponent rules. So everybody knows what exponents are, right? Just in case you've forgotten. Uh, it's pretty easy. It's like this. Let's say we have 5 to the third power. What does that mean? Well, it means 5 times 5 times 5. Okay? It means you take your base, that's what this number is called, the base. You take your base and you multiply, you multiply it by itself this many times. You look at your exponent, that's what this number is called, and you say, okay, base times itself, exponent many times. So 5 times 5 times 5, which is going to get us 125. All right? Pretty easy stuff, right? All right. So, uh, well, let's say we have something like, uh, let's say we've got, um, oh, 5 to the second power times 5 to the third power. Now, What's that going to be? Well, 5 to the second power, that's just 5 times 5, right? And 5 to the third power, well, that's just 5 times 5 times 5, okay? So this is 5 squared, and this is 5 cubed. What do I end up with? 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, so 5 to the fifth power. Is there a faster way I could have done that? Yeah. I could have just said 2 plus 3 is 5, okay? And remember, I'm doing this with 5s, but there's nothing special about 5s. I could have done it with any number. I could have done it with, uh, well, let's say x to stand for any number. I'll say, what if I had x to the 4th times x to the 2nd? Uh, what's that going to look like? Well, x to the 4th, that would be x times x times x times x, four of those x's, and x to the second, that would be times x times x, and what do I get? I get x to the four, I get x to the sixth power if I count those all up, okay? And again, an easier way to do that would have just been saying four plus two equals six. So what am I finding out here? I'm finding out that when I have x to the a power times x to the b power, what I get is x to the a plus b power, okay? That when you're multiplying, uh, when you're multiplying uh, numbers that have the same base and they're to, taken to exponents, that what you do is you keep that same base and you add the exponents. All right, that's exponent rule number one. Now let's look at exponent rule number two. Let's say we have x to the third power, and we take that to the fourth power. What does that mean? Well, to the fourth power means the base, x to the third, times x to the third, times x to the third, times x to the third, right? Isn't that what it means? We're taking x to the third to the fourth power. So that means we're multiplying it by itself four times. Now, didn't I just learn something about when you multiply exponents? When you multiply uh, um, uh, something that has the same base taken to an exponent? Oh yeah, you add the exponents. So that means I'm going to keep this same base and I'm going to add the exponents up. I'm going to get 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, which is 12. Now, what I could have done is I could have then like written out a whole bunch of x's and done it the long way, but I did it a somewhat shorter way. But there's an even shorter way, and that is right here, I wrote up these four threes. I didn't need to do that. I could have just said three times four, and that gets me 12. And sure enough, this gets us our second rule about exponents, and that is if you take x to a power, and then you take that, that becomes the base, to another power, then what that means is it's going to be x to the a times b power. Okay? That was rule number two. Now let's look at rule number three. Let's say we have x to the fifth divided by x squared. Okay? Well, x to the fifth, uh, that's just uh, x times x times x times x times x. Times x. And that's over x times x, right? Hmm. 
Think maybe we could uh, simplify this fraction a little bit? I think so. I think we could divide both numerator and denominator by x, and then divide both numerator and denominator by x again, and now I'm just left with nothing but 1 in this denominator, and I have x times x times x, also known as x to the third power there. Okay? There's another way I could have done this, and that is I could have said, well, this equals x to the fifth. Isn't x to the fifth equal to x to the third times x squared? I believe it is. Because if you remember, when you're multiplying and you have the same base, you just add the exponents. So that so x time x to the third times x squared would be x to the fifth. Well if I write it this way, it's pretty obvious to see that I can just x squared over x squared, that's just one. So I'm just left with uh, x cubed. Now, what's the easiest way to do this problem? The easiest way to do this problem is to look at this and say, hey, isn't 5 minus 2 equal to 3? Oh, yes, it is. So what does that mean? It means I have my third rule. And my third rule is x to the a power divided by x to the b power is x to the a minus b power. Okay? Keep it up? I hope so. All right, um, let's see. Rule number four. Uh, rule number four is an easy one, and that is, what do you get if you have uh, x to the third divided by x to the third? Well, I just learned a second ago that if I'm dividing, uh, if I'm dividing something that has the same base, then I just subtract the exponents, right? So that means this would be x to the 3 minus 3. Let's see, what's 3 minus 3? I take 3 and take it out. 0. So this is x to the 0 power. 0 power. It's kind of a weird idea. But this is true. Now, x to the third over x to the third, that's just something divided by itself, right? Anything divided by itself is going to be 1. So what does that tell me? It tells me that x to the 0 power equals 1, and this is true, okay? It's true for almost any number. It's true, it's true for every number except for 0, okay? 0 to the 0 power is not a defined value, okay? That's an indeterminate value. Um, and don't, don't worry about that right now, okay? Just worry about the fact that uh, anything to the 0 power equals 1 except for zero, and that's just something you can't evaluate. Um, now, uh, let's, let's look at this, let's look at this another way. Um, let's look real fast at the powers of two, okay? Let's say we have two to the second power, two to the third power, two to the fourth power, two to the fifth power, okay? 2 to the 2nd is 4, 2 to the 3rd is 8, 2 to the 4th is 16, 2 to the 5th is 32. How did I get those numbers so fast? I'm not, at, I'm not multiplying 2 times 2 times 2. I'm just taking 2 to the 4th and multiplying it times 2 to get 2 to the 5th. And so 2 to the 6th would be, you got it, 64 because 32 times 2 is 64. So as you're going down this list, as you're adding 1 to your exponent, the numbers here, the answers, are doubling, right? Well, now let's go up the list. So that means we would get 2 to the 1, 2 to the 0. So as I go from 64 to 32 to 16 to 8 to 4, what am I doing? I'm cutting them in half, right? I'm dividing them by 2. Okay. So 64 divided by 2 is 32. Divided by 2 is 16. Divided by 2 is 8. Divided by 2 is 4. Divided by 2 is 2. Divided by 2 is 1. And again, we see that something to the 0 power equals 1. It's going to happen no matter what your base here is, okay? Um, it's also uh, uh, worthwhile to note that anything to the one power is itself, okay? Now, we're getting outside of the original definition of an exponent here. We're no longer, it, it doesn't make any sense to say, well, two multiplied by itself one time. Blah. That, if you're multiplying something by itself, it has to be there at least twice. So we're getting a little bit out, outside of that particular definition, but what we're doing, it's just like a, a, it's just like multiplying times negative numbers. Okay, we're just being consistent with the patterns that we see here. So let's continue to be consistent, and let's say, well, 
if I have 2 to the 0 power, um, let's keep going up the list here. And uh, that means I need to erase this. And I get 2 to the negative 1 power. Well, that's going to be, you've got to cut this in half, right? It's going to be 1 half. And what if I did it one more time? Well, then I would get 2 to the negative 2 power. And when I cut 1 half in half, I get 1 fourth. And 2 to the negative 3 is going to be 1 eighth. And what I see is I'm starting to see all these numbers here in my denominators. Ha. Huh. It appears that 2 to the negative a power is 1 over 2 to the a power. Well, let's see if that's true for just 2 or if it's true for like any x at all. Let's see. Let's say I have x to the negative a power. Well, that would be x to the 0 minus a power, right? Well, if I'm subtracting exponents, that's the same thing as dividing the numbers. So that means it would be x to the 0 power divided by x to the a power, right? Well, x to the 0 power, didn't we decide that was 1? So that just equals 1 over x to the a power. And show sure enough, that's just what we saw right here. Instead of saying 2 to the negative a power, we're saying x to the negative a power. And instead of saying 1 over 2 to the a, we're saying 1 over x to the a. And we got our next rule here. Okay. By the way, there's one thing I want to point out about this. And that is, remember, 1 to the anything power just equals 1. So that's kind of like saying, well, yeah, that's kind of like saying I'm going to take 1 over x to the a power. Okay. 1 over, let's say, x to the seventh is just like saying 1 over x multiplied out seven times. All right? So x to the negative a equals the reciprocal of x to the a. So that means if x is 2 thirds, let's say, 2 thirds to the negative a power is going to be the reciprocal of 2 thirds, which is 3 halves to the a power. Kind of cool. All right. Two more rules. And these rules have to do with the base. Okay? Let's say instead of taking x to a power, we're going to take x times y to a power, to the a power. Well, what happens there? We're going to do x times y times x times y times x times y times x times y, a times, right? Well, if you remember, by the, uh, by the either commutative or associative rules, uh, I guess in this case it would be the commutative rule, we can take all of our, that this long string of multiplication, and we can reorder those. And we can put all of our x's first and all of our, all of our y's later. So what that means is we get x to the a power times y to the a power. I'm not sure I described that very well, so let me just show you. Let's say I did, let's say we have x times y to the third power, okay? What does that mean? It means we got x times y times x times y times x times y, okay? Now again, this is just multiplying all the way down. It doesn't matter what order things are in when you're multiplying them. That's what the commutative law of multiplication tells us. So what that means is I can take all my x's, this one and this one and this one, and I'll put those first, x times x times x. And then I'll pick up my y's, times y times y times y. And what do I get? x to the third times y to the third. And that's what I was doing a pretty poor job of explaining up here. Okay? So what that means is, if you have a couple of different bases taken to the same exponent, you can combine those into one base and have it to that same exponent. It also means you can take... If you have uh, a base like this that is actually the product of two different factors, uh, let's say uh, 4x squared, what that means is you can distribute that exponent and say this is 4 squared times x squared, which is 16x squared. And that's a true statement. All right? Last rule. Last rule states. 
very similar to our, our the next to last rule. This one says, what if I have x over y taken to a power? I think you know what this is already. x over y, is that the same as saying x times 1 over y? I mean, divided by a number is the same thing as multiplied times its, its reciprocal. And I know what to do with this. This is like saying x to the a times 1 over y to the a. And, uh, well, 1 over y to the a, that's the same thing as 1 over y to the a. And so what does that give me? It gets me x to the a over y to the a, which is fairly intuitive, I believe. All I'm saying is this thing here, I can split it up and say this equals x to the a power divided by y to the a power. All right? That's our last rule. So, what have we said? What all have we said? Well, I think it was this. Okay? This is what we've said. We've said that x to the a times x to the b is x to the a plus b. So when you're multiplying, you add the exponents. When you have an, uh, an, a power to another power, you multiply those exponents. Okay? So x to the a to the b gets you x to the a times b. If you have x to the a divided by x to the b, same root, okay, then you subtract your exponents. x to the 0, anything to the 0 power is 1, as long as that thing is not 0 itself. Okay? x to the negative a means that you have 1 over x to the a power, which can also be written as 1 over x, the, uh, the reciprocal of x, to the negative a power. And then finally, we see that x times y, if we have a, a product there to a power, then what you can do is you can distribute that exponent and say it's going to be x to the a times y to the a. And if you have a quotient to a power, you can also distribute the exponent and you say it equals x to the a over y to the a. Those are your rules. You got them? I hope so. See you next video. Bye-bye.